reviewing JavaScript algorithms and data structures on Free Code Camp. We are in basic JavaScript on challenge 81, I'm sorry, 82 of 113. So today we are going to count some cards, counting cards here. Okay, so in the casino game Blackjack, a player can determine whether they have an advantage on uh, the next hand over the house by keeping track of the relative number of high and low cards remaining in the deck. This is called card counting. So, having more high cards remaining in the deck favors the player. Each card is assigned a value according to the table below. So if we look, this changes the count to plus, this does nothing to the count, and then these high cards subtract one from the count. So, when the count is positive, the player should bet high. When the count is zero or negative, the player should bet low. So we're going to write a card counting function. It should receive a card parameter, which can be a string, or a number and increment or decrement the global count variable according to the player's or according to the card's value. So according to this this table here. All right, the function will then return a string with the current count and the and the string bet if the count is positive or hold if the count is zero or negative. The current count and the player's decision bet or hold should be separated by a single space. So example outputs we have the current the count space and then hold, or then the count, space, bet. And then some hints here, just things to be careful of. Okay, so as we can see in the code editor here, we have a global variable, count, set to zero initially. And we have a function, cc, counting cards, and it takes in a card parameter, a card argument. Uh, we then have just a couple instances of the function being called, and we have a return statement within the function. So let's just clean out the functions. We have a blank function, and we know that we're going to have to check the card uh, conditionally. We're going to have to see what value the card is uh, contains, what that variable is, and then uh, act differently based on the different variables. So we could use a bunch of if else checks, else if checks, but we know about switch statements now, so we should probably do a switch statement. And the switch statement takes in a parameter that we're going to compare against. Uh, compared to, rather, a variable that we are going to compare, uh, and then has brackets to have the logic. So for the first case, we're going to start here, and we're going to create cases for each of these cards. So if the card is 2, we want a case. So put that there so we can copy. And we know that we can stack these, so if we want the same result, we can just stack the different cases. All right, so two, three, four, five, and six. And these are all gonna have the same result, so then we can just have the uh, result that happens when it's one of these cases. So when the card is two, three, four, five, or six, we want to increment the count. So we can say count equals count plus one. We could also increment this just by saying count plus plus. And then we want to break out of this switch statement because we're going to have more logic at the end to actually return uh, return what it wants us to return, the count and then whether they hold or bet. Okay, so that's the first case where we increment the count by one. Now we need to come up with the cases where we do nothing. We do not change the count at all. So two, three, okay, so we need three more and that's so we can see here, cards 7, 8, and 9. So 7, oops, 7, 8, and 9. In this case, we're not going to increment the count. We're just going to break. We're just going to exit the conditional checks. And then the final cases where we have jack, uh, 10, jack, queen, king, and ace. So 10, jack, queen, king, ace. These are strings of J, string of queen, string of king, string of ace. And in these cases, we want to decrement the count. So again, we could say count equals count minus one, or we could simply just say count minus minus. And then it's the last case. These are the last cases, the last result that could possibly happen. So we don't need to break, but best practice, let's break there as well. All right, so this switch statement, all these conditions have 
changed the count in the global state. Now we just need to check the count and we're only doing one of two things. We're either betting or holding. So we can simply say if count, uh, let's see, if the count is positive, we want to bet. And if the count is zero or negative, we want to hold. So if the count is greater than zero, meaning it's not zero, but it's one or above, we are going to return. We can return count plus a string of space uh, bet. Now this should work technically. Uh, and we can say else. So if the count is not above zero, greater than zero, it means it is zero or below. And in that case, if it's zero or negative, we return count plus space hold. And that should do it. So this, all this switch statement uh, conditions incremented the count, did nothing in certain cases, or decremented the count. And then we're saying, OK, is the count greater than 0? All right, return count plus bet. Or if it is not that, it's not above 0, uh, it has to be 0 or negative, which then we just return count hold. All right, so that does work. This does not look clean, though. We don't like how this is laid out. I don't like how the count plus whatever. So really, what we can do is put these inside back ticks, which is to the left of the 1 on your keyboard. And then we can remove this, put this guy in curly braces so we know it's logic. Put a dollar sign to let it know it's logic there. And as you can see, that change color, which means it is plugging in the count for this whole this whole uh, string right there, that whole syntax. So it's going to be count in a string space bet because we did it that way. And we can do the same thing for this. We can back tick and then remove the quotes. And same thing, dollar sign curly brackets for logic. That's an F string. And that should do the exact same thing. So that's all we had to do for this challenge. This kind of went over switch cases, which we switch statements, which have cases and uh, can do different things in them, just like a bunch of stacked else if if else statements. So if you didn't, uh, if you don't understand this one, definitely go back and check out the last few videos I've done on on switch statements. Uh, but yeah, that's all we need for that one. Hope to see you guys in the next lesson. Awesome.